What's up everybody? Mainfly guys here gonna tie a crayfish or crawdad pattern that I uh, think that I like. Um, basically I've set up here just some dumbbell eyes. These are uh, some of the medium size and uh, I really like that sort of heavier heavier set. So your first step is you're just gonna make a small dubbing noodle. It doesn't need to be clean. You're just gonna make a small ball. This will ultimately help separate your um, your initial claws out right and here I have a fire hole stick um, I really like the shape of it and I like that wide gap because it allows me to do a lot of work um, underneath the point where if it was a tighter gap it'd be difficult to work in there so there's my ball our first step here we're gonna take some red squirrel tail this is a red squirrel from Maine and you're just gonna take a couple clumps and you're gonna lay it on each side of the ball. Now, it gets a little tight in here, so just take your time. Don't worry about whether it looks messy or not. We'll take care of that in the end. But lay it on each side of the ball. That ball will help to flare it out. And it's very, very slippery material. So make sure that you're uh, tying with some force. I use a very strong thread for this. Um, this is Danville's uh, Waxed Flymaster Plus in 210. So it's a very, very strong material. Um, so that I can really yank down on it. So once you get one side in and positioned, uh, go ahead and start working on the other side. Again, be careful not to um, get the lengths of the claws wrong. It's very easy to have one stick out farther than the other and you really want them uh, distributed equally. So I've just gone ahead and cleaned up the butt ends and I uh, put a little bit of super glue on here, but um, it's pretty easy, figured I'd skip it for you. The next is we're gonna put in some antenna. This is just the orange and black silly legs, a really cool material, nice and stretchy. Um, I like it to lay down on each side of the hook. So make sure you tie it in on one side of the hook and then catch it and come around to the other side of the hook. This step is, easy to mess up because when it's floating in the water the antenna have a tendency if they're not long enough to flip over and get caught on one side so when you're cutting your antenna make sure they are at least a body's length long um, I find that that's like the sweet spot so here I'm gonna go in um, and just sort of set them up right so they're facing the right way and then I'm going to clip them and it's about a body's length long. So following that I'm going to add some uh, mono eyes here that I made. This is 60 pound mono and it's a very delicate situation here because one mono is very slippery and two you're working underneath the point of that hook so it's difficult to get them set in the right position. Um, I color them later, so if you're going to color them black or green or whatever color you want to color them, I wait. But you want those eyes to be right behind where you tied your claws in. I mean, right, right behind it. Um, just make sure that they're pretty equal and sticking out right. Once they're all set and you like it where they are, I don't keep going with the thread because it can get very bulky. I just do a little drop of super glue and then boom, they're good to go. So the next step, we're going to grab some orange bucktail, or actually body hair, not bucktail. A good clump, you, you're not going to use a good length of it, you're just going to use sort of the tip of it. So I like to uh, grab a good clump, get them all even, line them up, and lay them right on top of that eye. Now this, since this is body hair, it's going to flare up when I cinch down. So I get it in position before I cinch it down, it's very important, because it has a tendency to spin. All right. So get it in position, and then boom, I pull down real tight. Once you pull down real tight, it'll start to stay. Um, and then I just sort of work backwards, catching those tag ends, and then I'll go ahead and cut that and wrap it up. But the positioning, make sure it's in position before you pull down hard. That is important. So I've just cut the tags in and covered it up. Next, we're going to come in and add, this is some UV2 orange, burnt orange schloppen, and this is going to be our legs. Depending on how long you want the legs, you can grab shorter schloppen or longer fibers, whatever. This one I want to make pretty long, 
Um, so I grabbed a, a bigger feather with sort of longer fibers. But if you want shorter legs, very, very simple. Just grab shorter fibers or a feather with uh, shorter fibers. So once you've tied it in, I'm just going to wrap, uh, tie it in right sort of behind the eyes, and I'm going to wrap backwards, touching wraps. I don't want there to be any space. I mean, I, I will overlap the wrap sometimes as well. Um, you really don't want to waste a lot of space here. And you'll see why in a second. But So I'm just going to keep going and palmering them uh, towards, the, uh, towards the front of the crayfish, so towards the back of the hook. And I'm going to give it about, I think, five or six turns here. Um, as many as you see fit, you know, as many as you seem fit. And once you're all set, just catch it in. A couple times out front, a couple times out back, and give it a snip. Okay. So now, all of our fibers are kind of all over the place. And we only want them on the bottom the the side where the uh, lead eyes are on the bottom so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna parse the fibers out with my fingers and I'm gonna push them down and then I'm gonna work my thread wraps back towards the eyes there towards the mono eyes so I'm holding it down and I'm gonna work it back this will catch all the fibers and keep them pushed down and I'm gonna work my thread basically all the way back to the eyes I don't really want any space between the eyes and these extra set of legs. I basically want everything to start um, at the same point. So I'm going to keep working back, keep working back until I feel I, I'm at a good spot. And usually right underneath the tip or a little bit behind the tip of the hook, the point of the hook, is where I like to, to finish. So now I've got it all wrapped up and my legs are positioned. I'm going to come in and tie some uh, medium gauged copper wire. Um, this is going to be used to segment the body and hold down the top of the uh, crayfish pattern here. So I'm going to come in, clean up a couple fibers that I didn't catch, and I'm going to tie in on the side a medium copper wire. Um, I like to use medium just because it's a, I can tug on it a little more. I can really pull it down when I'm securing the top of the crayfish pattern that uh, you guys will see in a second here. Um, by the way, I didn't mention these dumbbell eyes. They're just old, crappy dumbbell eyes that I found lying around. I just painted them black. Um, you can do whatever as far as weight if you don't want it to sink as fast. Don't put heavy, heavy ones on if you want it to sink a little bit slower, you know, put some lighter eyes on there. So to make the body, I have the same dubbing, and it's a cinnamon dubbing from Hairline, and it's actually a dry fly dubbing. Um, it just has a really buggy look to it, and I, I really like the, the feel of it. So you're going to toss a crap ton on here. If you look at a crayfish body, it's not very uniform. There's a lot of gills and stuff. It's not super smooth on the bottom. So where this is going to be showing, I don't care if it's perfect um, because sometimes I brush it out. I'll even brush it out sometimes to make sort of a gilly looking um, thing like it has little swimmers on, on the abdomen. Um, so I'm just going to toss a ton of it on here. Um, but it should have a little taper because crayfish get a little thinner towards the back, but really they don't get that much thinner towards the back. So here I have a little taper going, um, getting my body set up, and once once I feel like I have it all set up, we're going to move on to the next step and add the, uh, the top of the crayfish pattern. So I like to go around the dumbbell eyes pretty much right up uh, to the eye of the hook. I like to, to make sure that it's all it's all neatly wound and how I want it to look, so there we are. Make sure you sort of turn this pattern because you can miss spots on the opposite side. So here I have cut out, um, this is some thin skin, I've cut out just a little crayfish pattern um, with a little tail and I'm just going to lay it right on top. Basically the front of it is a little thicker than the back and it goes right past the eyes. You're going to take your wire, pull it on the top and just cover it down and pull tight. Because essentially the 
uh, front or the part that we're securing right now, the only thing that's securing that is this wire. So really pull down tightly. Um, there should be a little crimping on the sides, but don't worry about that. Pull down tightly. Make sure it's secure. The tail will be secured by thread, which is great, but you don't want the front to slip out either because then it just wouldn't look right. So make sure you're pulling down really, really hard. I like to do four. Sometimes I do five segments. Um, do whatever you want for the segments, but I like to do four. Um, and then work out front of the dumbbell eye. So there you go. You see the top view. It looks very, very nice. And I'm going to catch it out front of the dumbbell eyes. And then don't I don't like cutting medium gauge wire because it really does damage with scissors. So twist it. Do the helicopter. Pull down your wire and helicopter it. Take your time. It takes a little while to break. But it'll save your, your scissors. So once you get that all secured and your tail is flipped up, um, I use just an orange Sharpie and just color, color the thread because I'm using white right here. I probably should be using orange. but And then just make a little nose, color code it in, make sure all your white thread has kind of disappeared, and then I just whip finish. Boom. Boom. So there's my whip finish. My pattern is almost done. You can keep the eyes as, as is, or you can color them. And I like to color them black, and I'll show you here real quick what it looks like. And I just think it makes a world of difference. It makes it look so much more realistic. I mean, look at that. Look at that. So I just use a black Sharpie, and it works great. And uh, there's your pattern. You can brush the belly out. You see how I'm probably going to brush this belly out a little bit. Um, and that will make it look just a little nicer, a little more realistic, I think they have little swimmerettes on the bottom so boom there's our pattern nice little crayfish pattern sinks well small mouth killer um that's all i got so i hope you guys enjoyed this video check us out on instagram and youtube and uh, we'll catch you next time